All right, howdy marketers, and welcome to another incredible personal SEO consultation session. Um, although not at our usual US time, because we are having we are joined with some friends from Australia today. Um, we have good day. Good day. <laughs> good day. <laughs> We have a or good evening, as we were talking about earlier, because it is 7 p.m. here in Texas, where I am. <laughs> Still Tuesday as well, as not Wednesday yet, as like it is where you are. <laughs> uh, we've got a really exciting hour lined up for everybody. Um, as usual, I am Diana Richardson, the social media and community manager for the SEO unit here at SEMrush. And it's absolutely terrific to see you all here today, whether today means Tuesday or Wednesday, wherever you are. <laughs> if you haven't attended one of these before, buckle up, because I want you to get ready to take some notes. These are super productive sessions. I always end up walking away with like little nuggets myself. I absolutely love these sessions. We're going to walk through real life websites with our SEO expert and figure out some really tough SEO conundrums. So like I said, I always learn a lot myself, so I cannot wait to get started. And joining me in the webinar room today is someone I am just thrilled to be working with today. I'm a longtime fan myself. She is the senior technical lead SEO specialist at Studio Hawk, has one of the coolest LinkedIn profile pictures <laughs> I've ever seen. She's a data-driven marketer who also plays the electric violin. So please give a big warm welcome to Nick Ranger. <laughs> Hi, Nick. G'day, everybody. Hello. And um, I guess from Texas, howdy, y'all. Um, how next? So, yeah. <laughs> how, my how my jokes Wednesday are pretty so terrible. Far? <laughs> my Wednesday is pretty good. Um, we actually, a um, bit of a humble brag, um, as of 5 a.m. this morning, found out that we're actually being awarded um, the best global agency. Um, so uh, we had a bit of a celebration out there before. And yeah, so <laughs> everyone was in really, really great spirits. And yeah, just excited to get a get started on a good cracking day. Oh, <laughs> it's great to whoa, be here. Way to start a day. <laughs> right? I'm not complaining. <laughs> that is so awesome, Nick. Congratulations. And I mean, you know, what a reassuring thing to hear is you're about to like, you know, be the recipient uh, recipient of SEO advice is to now that you know that you are multiple award winning. <laughs> Um, I do have a super random question for you, though, because I was checking you out. Plus, I've, I've known you from following you over the years. Um, but I was curious to know, like, would you say that your experience as a musician has affected your experience as an SEO or a marketer in any way? I think um, I think having like um, experience with a lot of different things like has influence on us in ways that we don't expect. Right. Um <laughs> Here in SEO, we have so many amazing digital marketers who come from all walks of life. Um, I also formerly did engineering as well. Um, I used to be super into robots and then got into music. Um, so it's just kind of all intertwined. Um, I think it's no secret that um, <laughs> technical SEO is the thing that's really kind of captured my imagination, just mm -hmm. kept me um, really, really passionate about um, what we do and and um, wanting to find out pretty much everything, underturn every rock. Um, but I think, I think for everybody, um, your experience brings to a really, really great um, varied ex um, perspective when it comes to things. And when we're unpacking search intent, um, really the main thing is like I use different analogies sometimes. So, <laughs> yeah, that's my answer to that. Beautiful answer. And I totally agree. And I, lo I love my, one of my favorite bits of my job is like hearing everyone's story, their origin story and how what got them on their path and what got them excited about SEO or digital marketing or, you know, web design or whatever. And so I love I love hearing. Yeah, those different walks of life because it's so true how it's random we find ourselves here sometimes like, but it's so it's fascinating. So and so perfect segue too because now we get to know three amazing other people who have had all walks of life, you know, as part of their journey too. So let's get to know um, our guest today. So Zoe, why don't you kick us off? Tell us a little bit about yourself. Did you hear me, Zoe? Is that, a, can you, are you, can you hear me? There you hi, go, hi. now you're unmuted. <laughs> uh, sorry, it's a little bit like that. So I'm Zoe, I'm from um, Spark in the Red. So we are like um, design and marketing company in, based in Sydney. So the main thing we do is more on the website design. And then we also provide some um, digital marketing strategies for the client as well. 
Great, great. And you're from, and you, did you say that you're from Sydney as well? Yeah, yeah, I'm, we are based in Sydney as well. <laughs> Very cool. All right, Danielle, you're up. Why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Hi guys, um, I'm based in New York. I am um, the CEO of Art in New York, which is a women's clothing company. And yeah, we're really excited to hear everything that Nick has to say. Me too, and kudos to being woman-owned in NYC. Great job. All right, Graham, um, why don't you let us know about a little bit about you too? Hi, I'm also from Sydney, Australia. And lockdown <laughs> Sydney, of course, at the moment. Not, not much fun, but anyway. People are saying in the chat, they're calling it lockdown Sydney. I hadn't heard yes. that before. <laughs> yes. My heart goes out to you guys right now. <laughs> well, you know what we're talking about, Nick, wouldn't you? I do, I do. You've suffered through a lot of it already. Oh, so, yes. Yeah. No, uh, we're a, an outdoor cooling company, probably not high tech or anything like that. But mm. let's face it, we're all, all marketing companies ultimately, and that's mm -hmm. really where we're facing our challenge at the moment. Um, we probably the market leaders in some of the industry segments that we're involved in, but we've got a new recent competitor who's giving us a bit of a hurry up and we've got to lift our game in, <laughs> in all areas at the moment. So mm -hmm. while we're working on the Google ad side of things and trying to improve that, we've really got to improve our website as well to improve our, our SEO rankings. Nothing like a new competitor to keep you on your toes. Exactly. <laughs> Absolutely. Very cool. Okay, so before we get started, just a couple of quick notes for everyone. Um, each guest will have about 12 to 13 minutes with Nick. Um, I'll keep track of that time, um, but just keep an eye on me because I'll start to give you my fabulous hand signals um, as the time ticks down. But if you start to go way over, then I'll jump in and cut you off. But, you know, not to be rude, but we want to just make sure everyone gets their time in with Nick today. Um, we should be able to get to some of our questions from the live chat, so don't hold back there. I'll also be chiming into the live chat too um, as Nick takes over the questions here in the webinar room. Sound good? So just watch for the hands and don't hold back on your questions. And this should be a pretty, pretty lively session today. So I'm really excited. <laughs> All right. Well, to kick us off, we are going to start with Danielle. Go ahead, Danielle, start us off. Well, first, I want to say congrats to Nick. That's really great, your accomplishment. Um, so let's start off. So um, my sister and I founded this company at the beginning of the pandemic um, as a way to help our parents because yeah. they had to close their businesses. Um, so we really jumped into it. And instead of thinking about the foundation and all that SEO stuff from a professional standpoint, we just kind of did what we could. Um, and now we're a year into the business and we have had success through social media marketing um just viral videos on tiktok and whatnot um but we want to make everything just streamlined and we want to do things the right way now and not just haphazardly create all of our tags and h1s and all the things on behind the scenes on our shopify so we thought this would be a great way to kickstart our transformation into the proper way of doing things <laughs> awesome well, I love that you've that you've reached out and you're just wanting to f figure out like what's underneath the hood um, and getting some some advice from um, you know some external help. So that's mm -hmm. awesome. It's a really really great place to start. And good on you for stepping up and helping your your your, your parents. Thank you. Um, I took a look at what you've done um, in that last year, and to be honest, it's like hats off to you guys. Like you've really been able to build out a site that. Um, that is like it makes sense like it's got a good landing page experience um there is like a really nice wide array of um you know different dresses and, and pants and all kinds of wonderful um, little fashion pieces um that that are really really well laid out so um right off the bat really really mm -hmm. great um this is just from semrush that i've been able to pull out so i can see at the moment that you know you've been able to grow your um users per month to around about 266 now Again, I love SEMrush. Um, it's not an accurate re replication of your Google Analytics. Your Google Analytics is going to tell you absolutely everything about what's going on underneath the hood. Um, mm -hmm. But this is just kind of what I can see from an external point of view. And you've had some good like growth, 1.5% growth um, month on month from what I can see at the moment. 
you rank for a 51 keyword, which is which is pretty conservative considering that, like you know you've been um, been there for about a year. Um, and I think a lot of that comes from like branded search. So like 96% of all of your traffic at the moment comes from branded search. Now that I think is going to be a really really great key um, common denominator um, for for going through this. Hey Nick, so look, while you're presenting this, could you put it in presenter mode so we can see it full screen? Yeah, totally. I was going to toggle in between of <laughs> going in and out of this. So we'll make it just um, bigger because just the details yeah. are really interesting and they were just a little hard to see. No, great. Um, great. Thank I appreciate you. that. So you had a really, really great um, question, which is like wanting just to find out the basics of this year. Now, um, we're under a bit of a time constraint, so I'm just going to be very top level. But um, I've basically done a full technical audit, which I'll send to you after this and that goes through um, things a lot more in, in detail um, and it's also written out so it will be nice and easy for you to follow but SEO really like when you think about it it's really three main things that you can that you can kind of think of start off with considering like your your technical um, your technical SEO because that's really the foundation it's kind of like making sure that um, your 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 baseline concrete is like reinforced and things like that before you start to really think about what you're building, what your empire is going to look like um, from that. So that really technical SEO is kind of like well, bots go through, bots crawl, and bots um, understand this, your your site, your pages. That then influences where it gets indexed in in Google search engine results pages. Um, mm -hmm. And this is really where that, that goes. So this, if there's any inhibitors to that, if there's anything that's sort of there is like some mixed signals or duplicate signals, um, that's really going to kind of confuse search engines. So right off the bat, technical SEO is where most people um, really want to start figuring out you know what the <laughs> what the landscape looks like. It's also the thing that I like the most. <laughs> mm -hmm. Now, content is great because content really drives the growth of your website. So, really, really focus on um, making sure that all of your pages are ones that you're wanting to present to not just search engines but to your customer base. Like, is this a really really great hero page? Is it written kind of nicely and, and um, consecutively? It is. Does it make sense? Um, is it kind of obvious that you're trying to just, you know, consider SEO and shove as many keywords there as possible? Like, you know, make things that make sense to your customers. Make things that make sense to just anyone wanting to find out. I think um, with anyone who has gone through COVID and things like that, a lot of people are absorbed off the streets and they're, they're online. So they're going to want to know about like, okay, if I get this dress, um, I can't go into a store and try it on. So, you know, is it like your ASOS's of the world, your your bigger sort of um, fashion retailers? Can I have some dis some um, flexibility in if it doesn't fit me or if it's damaged or anything like that? Like, can I send it back? What are the terms around that? Mm -hmm. And secondly, people wondering like, okay, well, what's the delivery time? Like, you know, can I sort of, um, when it like going out, um, <laughs> can I get this dress within like one week, two weeks, four mm -hmm. weeks, you know, those kinds of considerations. Um, and as you can probably appreciate, consider like what it means from going from um, warehouse to consumer. And if you make those those kinds of things really, really easy to understand um, and kind of like really help people make those kinds of purchasing considerations, that's going to really help you in the long run. Furthermore, if people have got like questions about their style, um, I don't know if you can sort of get this. Um, this was bought for me. I am not the most stylish person in the world and I need help. <laughs> so for people like me, I'm either going to ask my friends or I'm going to like, you know, be scrolling on my phone at night, just being like, what are some like really good kind of like styles and things like that for people of my body shape or, you know, people of my skin tone or, you know, ethnicity, mm -hmm. I don't know, like whatever really goes and, and, and um, drives that, that purchasing decision. For me, it's kind of more of my body type, right? So mm -hmm. what are some really, really great pieces I can combine that's going to really cinch in? Um, so if you've got really, really great content like that and have that internally linked to your pages, that's really going to just provide a lot of great value to your customer base. Introduce who you are. Kind of say, like, yeah, I'm the authority. Like, I know my stuff. I know what I'm talking about, and I've got some really beautiful pieces that will suit you. Just, um, you know, think about what it would be like for you to put on that stuff. So that's mm -hmm. going to be really, really important for you as well. 
Now, offsite, I've kind of like branched out as offsite because it um, really means backlinks and like you know things that are external to just your website. So um, I don't think you've got a, a, any stores at the moment. It's just purely online. Is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, awesome. So in some instances, I might talk about Google My Business, but you don't have a, a, a local store, so it doesn't really make sense for a local um, search. So just really focus on backlinks. Now, it's really important when you're when you're considering backlinks, a backlink is essentially just like an endorsement. Like it is a link on another website that points back to you and says like, yeah, I, I, I know um, Art in New York. They're awesome. Like they are really, really great female-led um, family owned webs like business and they have some really really great pieces and things like that and i really think that they are a really great reputable business it's like your credibility boost um so having uh, some really good um backlinks that are niche relevant that have some traffic and that have some keywords and things like that um, are going to be really really good for you right now i wouldn't focus too much on on, on, on that because there's a million people out there that's going to sell you some backlinks that can actually be a little bit hurt, like actually hurt your business because if it's not niche relevant what's the point right so for you I would just focus on like you know your networks and things like that your suppliers your distributors um, you know people that you buy from like um, if you've got some really really good networks and things like that or some stores that you might start to put some pieces into um, they've all got websites, you know, you can, you can kind of like say to them, like, this is who I am. Let, let's sort of um, get a bit of a profile about art in New York on your site. Similarly, it works really, really great for PR with like getting news items and things like that out there. Like art in New York is, um, and again, you can, you can use your anchors. We're a family owned business and use your story. Like we started in the midst of COVID and, we really want to be able to support our, our family and be able to give back to our community. And that's what we stand for as a business. And that's really what the heart of what we do is focused around, um, that giving back and that appreciation of, of the brand and what it stands for. So, again, like that's a really, really great kind of like PR piece that you can get out, introduce people to what you are, but also build the authority, build the credibility back to your side. Right. That's SEO. It sounds like a lot, but look, to get started with the basics, SEMrush has a really, really amazing beginner's guide to SEO. Um, I've linked that here, which you can't see at the moment, but uh, like I said, I've done a, a bit of a write-up, so I'll send that to you and you can do that. Um, yeah. Plus also like a little bit of a personal plug. We've also got Hulk Academy, which is like online video training. So um You've got courses, you've got videos, you've got like um, fundamentals, you've got everything that you'll need to kind of like step by step go through and be like, how do I write this? How do I research this? How do I apply mm -hmm. this? All those answers are, are um, all those questions are answered. All right. Now, you talked to me about like, you know, the growth of your website. And I said, like, well, the branded and non branded is kind of a bit of an uh, important common denominator there. Right now, 96% of that is all branded content. So this is what that means. Like you can see here with the keywords, again, I just pull this out of SEMrush, Art in New York, 320 searches per month. Fantastic. There are 320 people on average every month searching for just your brand. So that is such a wonderful place to start with. So that's awesome. You have an audience. Now, how will you really grow that audience is with non-branded keywords. And how you grow that is really start to, starting to think about like, okay, what does my what does my metadata look like on my pages? So this is kind of where we now can like start to look at your your pages and really hear every single one. Now, when I say like metadata, what is that? <laughs> So when you're going in Shopify and you're going in to be able to like, you know, edit your page or edit your collection, um, you can be able to scroll down and they'll have like that little SEO error that says like title and their description. That's mm -hmm. kind of what I mean. So right now we've got something that looks really standard out of the box, dresses, Art New York. You know, that's fine for now. Um, but I think we can do a little bit more just to say like, you know, dress, um, you know dresses and maybe like you've got something really um, specific to you to the way that you do that i think you've got um free delivery for 150 dollars um and up right um mm -hmm. so maybe you can include that in the meta description as like an extra thing to pull people in or um you know you've got like you know free returns or i don't know some kind of other like you know 
thing to like separate you from every other you know fashion store out there that's just kind of like you know picking this up right now so that's a really really great bit of real estate you can be able to utilize Okay, okay, we have to stop. I'm sorry. Oh, this is such a great okay. place. Thank you so much. <laughs> I'm oh, so man. sorry to I cut have... that off because that was just absolutely yeah. amazing. Um, no, that's all but good. we have that's to keep good. going. <laughs> that's all good. No oh, Nick. All right. Right. Thank you so awesome. much, Nick. <laughs> no worries. What, I mean, just like what a great place to start because I, a lot of what Nick just went over was just so applicable to I think e-com across the board, which are it's so many businesses are in Danielle's spot, like place, right? Like they had to get online really quick during COVID to help the family business, to help their own business. I think that's just such a, that's just a common scenario that we, it's an unfortunate common scenario because you had to do it so quick. Like you kind of wish you had more time to plan it out, right? But mm -hmm. <laughs> it is what it is. And I think Nick just proposed this amazing, like launching pad for success for e-com like that was just so mm. powerful thank you both that was really really cool um no worries. we have we have a question i think i'm going to come back to it because i kind i want to get to uh graham but we are having some questions come in in the live chat so i'm hoping we'll have yeah. a few minutes at the end to talk about those um but graham why don't you go ahead and kick us off with um your your site and what questions you have for nick yeah. okay hi dick we are quite different to uh, Danielle's business. We are <laughs> almost strictly a B2B business. So we have you know, a different type of thing. We're usually going to uh, fairly large businesses in most cases. We really need to improve our SEO. And we're looking for the ideas of what the actual best things to concentrate are on at this stage. Yeah. We know we're going to increase our domain authority. We know that you know our website's badly in need of a redesign because it's become a bit, um, let's call it unplanned. It's been adjusted <laughs> on the run many, many times, including yeah. I spent most of April doing updates to it, but nothing was ever done cohesively. There've always just been bits and pieces here and there with no overall plan. So we're looking at that at the moment. That's something we need to really focus on. But you know, things like um, I've read listicles are a good idea for SEO in some areas. Mm -hmm. Should we have a blog? Uh, how would we format case studies? All those type of things. Mm -hmm. You know, where it's very much a, a do-it-yourself website. Where I get other people to do most of the technical work. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and you know, kudos to you to getting um, rolling up your sleeves and getting in there and you know trying to do some of this yourself. I can see. Um, you know, your website at the moment. This is just what I can see from your organic traffic and your growth of organic keywords. Um, you know, it's kind of just kind of just there. It's petering along. And especially when another competitor comes into the fray, um, it kind of really motivates and, and kind of is like, all right, we gotta we gotta actually like look at this and um, you know, take this quite seriously. At the moment, like I'm seeing just a little bit of reduction in um in your traffic and you know, with your pages, it's at the moment they're like walls of text. And like for any business owner, particularly in B2B from my experience. People want to be able to see some really, really quick consolidated information and be able to be like, yep, Mr. Fog, like, yeah, I've heard about it from a mate, they use it, but at the same time, like, it's really clear, it's really well laid out. I totally understand what they do and what what things that I'm interested in to be able to, to be able to consider from what I need out of, like, getting, like, a um, really good um, cooling fan or something like that installed into, my, uh, into, into the patio section of my restaurant. Um, you know, these are really, really important things to be able to consider. So um, at the moment, you sort of rank for 94 keywords. But the good thing is like 30% of your traffic comes from brand search and 70% of that is actually coming from non-branded, which is awesome. So well done for well done to you. And, and um, looking at these keywords, like some of them you do um, you know, have some really, really great competitor layouts. Now, I'm going to be talking about like how to link all of this together. Now, we just went through um, with Art in New York before about you know the basics, the foundations of SEO. Now, this is where we can basically look at this and consider a plan. And I love that you said that because um, <laughs> it fits my narrative that there wasn't really a big plan when going through this. So Not at all. what I found really indicative, got 124 URLs on your, on your pages at the moment. Um, and at the moment, like they're all kind of off, um, 
that that TLD or they're kind of like not meaningful. So with every single page that you have that you're wanting to have listed in your sitemap, which is just a list of all the things you're saying to Google, like, hey, these are my pages. Consider these for competitive rank, right? Um, you want to have like the best user experience possible. Now, with when it comes to like, um, now this is just a screenshot from Screaming Frog. It's another tool that I really like to use. It's free for up to 500 URLs. Pretty sure that applies to everybody that um, I had a look at today. Um, it's just a really fun thing to be able to like, you know, put in there and just, just see an overview of what's going on as well as a similar site audit tool, which is fantastic. Um, I use this a lot to be able to look at the English. This is also in SEMrush, but I find that sometimes like for this, it's really, really nice and clear to see what's going on. For most of your pages, you've got one, one to three um, kind of like internal links that are point around to each other. When you're thinking about it, if these are really important pages and some of them really, to be honest, from my perspective, they are, um, you're wanting people to be able to find it. You're wanting search engines to be able to go through and crawl your pages and be able to find it. So I try and like keep it as a little bit of like a rule of a rule of four. So this is actually from a presentation that I did last week for the same rush um, about site architecture. And in that, I talked a lot about internal links. And this one is like, if you've got say like um, a transactional page, so um, you're one of your service-based pages that says like, oh, this is um, this is like a, a, like a, a cooling, um, cooling solution for your business. Like we've got like, you know, misting fans and things like that. Um, that's like a transactional page because you want someone to go to there and be like, yeah, I need that. Um, I am in cans and it is unbelievably toasty hot all the time. I think about my friends in the north. But um, how do people be able to find that? Most of the time, they're not looking. Like, especially business owners, like, they'll be just kind of, like, dancing around, like, what they might want or, you know, what are things of that. So there's that consolidation fine from, from that. So how, search, how Google is wanting to really present information is really starting to consider, like, that whole purchase journey. So that's why I've got informational and intent here and commercial. Informational is just like, what is it like, or, what, or just like, um, like how do I, how do I sort of like, you know, cool down my business, or you know, how do I create like a really nice kind of um, light experience, or you know, something that that kind of speaks to what you do, right? Um, and then commercial intent is kind of like more of that consideration. It's like, you know, should I just have like an upstanding fan that just blows across my customers? Um, or should I have something that is a little bit more integrated within um, the structure of my business, something that you offer and saying like, you know, this is uh, one of the best long-term solutions. It's really, really um, like discreet, um, which is a really nice design that your, your business offers. Um, and it's a really nice way to um, welcome people into your space and make them just feel like, oh, it's really, it's like, it's like 10 degrees cooler in here. This is awesome. I might stay here a little bit longer and enjoy that beer. So um, that's a really, really great way to um, have supporting content around your pages, internally linking them, and basically showing um, search engines um, that these pages are really important to your website. Because got a flat structure, you can sort of see there is a thing called crawl depth. It's a bit of a flat structure. So having this like plan sort of thing um, is really, really great. And it starts to make you think what kind of questions do my um, do, do people have around this stuff? And again, sem um, uh, keyword magic tool is brilliant for that because they've got a button that says questions. They've got all kinds of things you can do to be able to really start to map this out. And I've done a technical audit for you as well, so I've tried to keep all that. <laughs> I'm just going to go top level, and we'll um, in that it goes into a lot more detail. So yeah. <laughs> Now, with your pages, like what I was saying with Art New York, like just aligning the keyword research to your pages. Like um, there's all kinds of things you can do. With this outdoor cooling page, it is a big wall of, of text right now, right? So putting things in the dot points would be really nice and easy way to go. Um, but also to making sure that the metadata that you have matches the search intent. So I had a look at outdoor cooling. You know, it's in your title tag somewhere with 119 characters, a little bit too much, mate. <laughs> um, and it's in your description again, um, but it's actually not a, not a bad description, but yeah. Um, 
And your heading, uh, your heading one is um, outdoor cooling. Now, outdoor cooling is fine, like, but I get more like informational and commercial intent. So, like, um, you know, more like questions. And what I just, what I just mean by that is, I'm just going to go here. Can you guys see Google outdoor cooling? Right? Can you see Google right now? See that I'm searching that. Awesome. So when I say informational content, I mean like four ways to stay cool in your patio this summer. Like that's a great blog, um, like co like supporting content for your commercial, your transactional pages, right? Um, so that's like informational. Um, and then you've got like a, a transactional in intent. That's that's pretty good. And there you guys are, number five. That's awesome. Um, but for this one, like, you know, there's 170 searches per month. That's um, that's from SEMrush. This is sort of like another tool. So, <laughs> but I like to use SEMrush because it's got the largest keyword database in the world. Um, but when we're when we're considering a like outdoor misting fan, like when I actually read um, on your page, like what it is and what it does, like for this particular one, like it's 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 a big outdoor misting fan, right? Am I am I correct in this? Yes. Awesome. Well, that has 720 searches per month. And when I had a look at that, most of that intent was all transactional. So people, when they are looking for that, um, they're going to want to find your, you and your services. So, again, that might be a better um, primary keyword to link in with this page. It's a bit of an example of um, that. And for every single page, one primary keyword. It's pretty good. All right. So, well... <laughs> You guys are in Sydney right now. Um, it's pretty it's pretty tough. Um, but one thing that I think you can do with your contact us page, um, people are going to want to figure out like what they can do. And so there's all kinds of things. I can get really into the weeds of this, but I'm just going to keep it top level. So um, with your contact us page, like have your location, your address, your phone, fax, um, if, you're, if that's still relevant. Um, and like, you know, an email thing. And you've got your contact form that captures a lot of that stuff. Um, but again, like that would be really good. I didn't test this out, but I hope that that's kind of goes to a page that says, thank you, we'll be in contact with you like within like X amount of time. Again, a really nice way to capture that. Having, um, having tracking on that, just to be able to see like those interactions would be really, really good. Opening hours. So, um, you don't really have any opening hours here at the moment. So, you know, can I call you now or are you 24 hours? Like, you know, what are the appropriate times that you're saying to people, like, this is um, our standard operating hours of business. Like, if I if you reach out on a Saturday, am I going to get contacted on a Saturday? So just, like, little things like that. Um, you guys have um, an, an actual address. Now, I'm going to assume that that's a, that's a real address. So just little things about, like, um, getting there, like, if I'm actually to go to your location, like what do I expect? Some really, some um, some businesses really go down to the granularity of like you know we're right next to the um, the number eight train or something like that, or you know this is like an, a, a good sort of way we're like you know um, two minutes out of the city, for example. I don't I don't know Sydney all that well. I, I do apologize. <laughs> I never could drive in Sydney successfully. Uh, scary. <laughs> Set up and pack down information. Now, of course, um, this is kind of like just general things for what to expect. And I also really want to see those on your on your service level pages. Like if uh, if a business is calling them out, potentially that's going to have some kind of halt to the business because you've got your technicians are going to be in there. They're going to be installing things. Like how long does that take, right? Um, so having a good guideline as to um, some expectations are really good for them just to kind of in their mind have a bit of an idea that yeah it's probably might differ um depending on the location the layout of the building and um what well, like how complicated the the electricals are <laughs> um, but like having a good idea of this just helps them be able to plan out their days their businesses um and their downtime a lot better and gives you guys like a lot more of a leeway to to have those conversations when they do eventually reach out to you. So that's going to be really, really good. Um, I think like when we're going and looking at these pages, look, um, like I was saying, walls of text. <laughs> walls of text. And I, I love that you guys have got really, really great information. But some of this stuff, when, I was, when I'm saying like about supporting um, content, 
like things like this, like should I use mist fans or, you know, up to cool my area? How does the system work? They're really, really good, but they're kind of like FAQs, right? Mm -hmm. um, like maybe you can, maybe you can like condense those and just have like little dot points to answer your questions and maybe put all this extrapolated like longer form content onto a blog that internally links back to this page. Um, again, um, you know, for this, if there is like some um, FAQs, and I love FAQs on service pages, you can have what's called um, FAQ schema. So that's just something that um, really just helps um, you, you to be able to see like in the service when I'm looking for this stuff. Like say for example, uh, where is Mr. 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 There we are. Oh, <laughs> they're in the, oh. So you're on the first page and you got an ad. Yes. <laughs> Mate, you're, you're um, like organic listings, you've already you've already worked hard to get that spot. If you've got a paid ad over the top of it and they want to find you, they're going to click on your ad and that's going to cost you money rather than finding you here. So you might be doubling up there. <laughs> um, but I'm not. That's I'm not a reaction a paid... to a problem we're having at the moment. Yeah. So that's why the ads yeah. are there, and it is costing yeah, us big time. Okay. <laughs> We were Is we're it, a little over time now. <laughs> that's fine. But I'm, I'm just, sorry. I'm I'm just expecting you just to be like Nick, stop talking. <laughs> no, I was I was like I was so waiting for you to start talking about FAQ schema on that last page. Like I was waiting for it, so I didn't want to cut yeah. you off. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> I wanted yeah. I wanted before we head over to Zoe. I wanted to talk about something that I find really interesting and not talked about a whole lot, Nick, and that is the power and importance of those internal links. You were talking about at the beginning of the conversation with Graham and like the site structure, but I don't I don't think it's um, a concept that is thought about necessarily all the way through, because we talk about backlinks so much, like the concept of these internal links are so powerful in everything that you said, like it was, you know, it's sending not only the search engines through your site, but it's sending your customer through this site. It is mm -hmm. passing people through this journey, but it is giving a structure to Google, to Bing, to DuckDuckGo, to understand what is important to you and what's important to your business. So the power of internal links should not be uh, overshadowed by the power of backlinks, I think. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And I, I kind of am of the opinion, like if you don't have a process or if you don't have like a really good um, partner to um, outreach um, for backlinks, um, then just focus on, on, on just growing out your business and doing what you do really, really well. Focus on, on fixing the technical issues. Focus on writing some really, really great um, content and laying it out um, in a way that makes sense to, to users and, uh, again, for search engines with that really nice heading structure. Um, yeah, don't, because don't, <laughs> I've, I've, um, I've gone through and, and, like, you know, had to reverse enough manual um, actions on um, some really dodgy um yeah, backlink practices. And of course, I've been in SEO for a little while, so I've seen a, seen a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Which is actually a really great segue. And let, we, let's try to answer this question quickly so we can get over to Zoe. But Craig Mullins asked in the live chat something very on topic for this. He asks, yep. what are your thoughts about the coupon sites that were um, that are common in these backlink and backlink profiles now? Like any thoughts on the on these sites? Yeah, so coupon sites are really there to be able to you know, offer discounts and things like that to people. Um, look, if it has, if it's a, if it's a big reputable site that um, is quite trustworthy and has some really, really genuinely good deals. Look, um, I'm from, I'm from the Gold Coast, and like half my family are, like, you know, coupon keepers, um, <laughs> <laughs> and you know, they'll scour the line. They're basically the, um, the Honey Chrome extension, but in human form. Um, so some of these some of these websites are actually really really great. Um, they are pretty genuine and they do what they th that they deliver. But again, if they're sort of like you know pop up ones and and they're kind of just there um, really for the sake of being able to have like these these linking networks and things like that. Um, again, like pop it into SEMrush, pop it into like um, maybe Ahrefs or something like that, and really have a considered opinion as to. Um, you know, whether or not that this is um, a really meaningful thing to be able to point back to your site. Um, and again, like I'm always like happy to, you know, ha take a DM or take um, a Twitter DM, whatever, whatever. <laughs> um, I'm just on studiohawk.com.au. Just reach out and ask me some questions because 
Um, these are pretty important and just kind of making these considerations, like, you know, that's what we're here for. That's why like I'm, I'm using my time right now to help. Because you're amazing. And I love that answer. I mean, I, I think that philosophy applies to any sort of backlink you're thinking about outreaching to or whatever is do your homework. Mm -hmm. Don't just assume yeah. and please don't do it because your competitor is. <laughs> That's not a reason. Yeah. All right, we are going to head over to Zoe for the next uh, 12 or 13 minutes or so to cover your questions. Awesome. Thank you. <laughs> Hi, Nick. Um, so um, we are Spark Interact. So we, what we do is that we usually design our website for clients and they might have like an existing website, then they might have, or oh, it's a brand new website and the website could be like, a, it's, it's already ranking so so when mm -hmm. we are doing the website we're gonna is that it'll be a full new website after we launch mm -hmm. i'm just wondering like um, what are the critical in considerations when we are building the new website for them now like when we yeah. launch a new website yeah all right so you're building the website for someone else or you're you're relaunching your current website at the moment is like what's the what's the story there? yeah yeah like yeah, so both ways. So because we have yeah. clients that need to design like <laughs> and then we are building yeah. a new websites as well. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, awesome. Um so I've done a lot of work with site migrations and I've seen it done well and I've seen it done um like you know, unscrambling a cooked egg, <laughs> which is I think a nice way to put it. Um look this is kind of like where your site is at the moment. It's got some good organic um, uh, growth. It's got some good keywords that it ranks for um, and they seem to be relevant, which is always a, a, a good place to start. Um, and 80 any percent comes from branded search. So we want to be able to keep um, all of that hard work and, and things like that. So when it comes to like um, designing a new site, well, it's, there is a lot of different components of it. So, First things first, like whenever you're doing anything with, um, you know, changing a new site, like there's a lot of different ways that we can kind of look at um, doing site migrations and things like that, building out new sites. It might be a new theme. It might be um, you're, you're merging sites into one or it might, you know, lots of different types of site migrations, right? Um, different themes will sometimes do different things to um, just the structure of how, you um, the pages layout or, you know, the heading structures and things like that. And they can have effects on um, your site. Similarly, when you're in the staging environment and you push it live, then, <laughs> then your hosting provider actually starts to take the weight of all the users coming in and it's like, oh, um, yeah, noises. So well, first things first, like conduct a, a crawl of your website, have a nice snapshot in time of what all the pages are because that's going to be really, really important should anything go awry. You've got something static that you can always refer back to. When it comes to like redirecting old pages um, that are being deleted, replace them um, with new pages. I try and like, I like to not change the URL structure if I can help it. If there's a really good reason for it, I try not to change it. Um, Look, planning is pretty important. Um, so really scope what you're doing first, right? Know who's a part of that team, know what their concerns are, and really understand what their goals are um, and explain the risks of what's involved and how to map out the tasks. Um, because when it, keep, when it goes wrong, it kind of really, really goes wrong. Um, in, my, in my little technical audit, um, I have like a whole list of, of considerations to be able to go. So. Um, <laughs> it's it's hard to kind of like 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 let's let's have an example so this is with your current website right so spark interactive yeah yeah that's yeah. Right. yeah so at the moment like um like how many pages do you have uh no i haven't i haven't captured that but Look, do a do a full crawl of this. Like, you know, get a good snapshot of what it looks like right now. Like, you know, what are your what are you wanting to do with these? Are you wanting to build them out? Are you want to redesign them? Like, that's going to be really really important. Um, say, for example, with another site, um, you know, they might be they might be changing because um, with you know, Mister Fog, and I'll use these guys as an example. You know, they know that like you know the the theme of this site is starting to look a little bit dated and they really want to maybe look at giving them a fresh feel and a fresh um, a fresh look at that. 
um, have a really, really good plan as to what that's going to look like. Um, I've done work with um, a lot of dev agencies that like to really plan out what their what the architecture is going to look like. So, you know, how is it going to, what is this top level menu going to look like? You know, how does this sort of work? How are things like sort of listed and things like that? Um, sorry, there's a lot of things to consider. <laughs> and I feel like I'm just kind of talking at you a little bit. Um, but, you know, there are so many different considerations. And that so, reminds me a lot of things. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But like at the same time, the main thing is take a take a whole snapshot of what you're you're doing, um, you know, a whole crawl of your website, save it. Um, if you can avoid it, don't change the URL structure too much because with a redirect, um, basically search engines have to go through, pass and, and reconsider what this page is about from scratch, right? Um, I've gone into a lot more detail with this with a site migration um, webinar. Um, and, and it really, really goes through from the planning to the post, um, uh, to the pre-launch sort of testing stage, um, to the launch stage and then post launch stage. Um, really making sure that you have a, a, a redirect plan if the URLs are to change for whatever reason. Um, and to really make sure that the intent for this for the old page matches the intent for the new page. And a lot of the time um, that doesn't happen. Um, I wouldn't be redirecting a lot of stuff back to the home page because that's not a great user experience, right? You're clicking through to something and go straight back to the home page, and I've kind of got to start all over again, right? So, so redirecting it to the most relevant page is super, super important. Um, yeah, <laughs> I think. Um, so going through the SEO strategy, you know, what are the things you need to plan and consider and things like that? So you're a design agency, right? Um, the things that you're wanting to consider is like, you know, having having themes and things like that you're building out um, that make it really, really nice and easy for people to be able to add stuff. Well, some of the best things for an e-commerce website would be to have, um, have an area of, to have your heading one and a little bit of content so they can be able to add some um, you know, internal links in there or add some copy in there to further contextualize what that page is about. Having faceted um, navigation in there so that they can be able to, with their tags and things like that, um, like say, for example, with Art in New York, one of the things that I thought that they could, they could kind of do here is add some faceted navigation here on maybe the left-hand pane. They have a whole really, really great range of different dresses and things like that, strappy, um, halter neck, um, uh, short. <laughs> um, you can tell I'm not a very fashionable person, but at the same time, like when it comes to this stuff, your keyword research is going to be able to inform this stuff, and you and with faster navigation, you can be able to have some of the, like those those modifiers that help you granularly find more um, dresses that suit your search. I only want to see black dresses, so I might sort by color, I might sort by price. Um, and I might sort sort by style, you know, as like some really, really good top level modifiers to do that. And for your kind of like B2B service based businesses, um, making sure that there's nice, clear call to actions like this super large call to action, but something that just really just makes sense for these guys. Um, having like their if they've got multiple locations, you know, have those multiple locations and making sure that each of those pages are nice and you and unique. Um, and that it's nice and simple and it's just really bold and um, and all that. From a technical perspective, make sure that you, these pages are um, mobile friendly and um, mobile first. So a great way to do this, mobile friendly test. I'm sure you you probably would have done this quite a few times, but um, if it's not something that's in your day-to-day -day practice, just make sure that it's mobile friendly. This sort of stuff, like make sure that, um, oh, run test, that make, that make sure that like from a mobile experience, um, you know, there's nothing that's sort of like, you know, blocking, um, blocking search engines. Like if you've got intrusive pop-ups, um, you know, not to have those or to tow them in a way that it's going to be a little bit more meaningful. Um, and make sure that the the pixel parameters and things like that um, are suited towards um, you know that mobile experience. Um, similarly to uh, Merkle has a really really great um, mobile first um, 
mobile first test. So this is just looking again from a code perspective, um, making sure that from a mobile to desktop version, um, like let's have a look at what it, what that looks like. You know, making sure that the that um, different layers of um, the actual HTML behind that isn't too dissimilar. Because if there's dissimilar um, things, sometimes it can kind of be like, well, you know, we might um, only consider the the mobile version of this and completely ignore the desktop version of this. Um, so that's a really really great way to to go through and just be able to test, you know, how these pages are going to perform. Um, from a from a um, page speed insight um, perspective, you want to make sure that these are also really really nice and and fast. Um, look, from a coding perspective, don't have things that are that are super long. Um, the hard way is probably usually more than often um, the right way to go about doing it. So instead of like adding um, code underneath things, rewriting um, and minifying is probably you know. <laughs> the best way of going about doing things. Um, I like to change things in the code rather than sometimes just adding on plugins. That's a personal preference because um, I feel super comfortable, but at the same time, making sure that you're not using too many plugins to be able to do some pretty basic things, um, like adding, I don't know, um, <laughs> Google Analytics scripts or Google Tag Manager scripts. I like just to add, like embed them straight into the HTML um, in the in the header or the body um, and just kind of keeping it like that rather than having a plugin that will add even more code to that. So, um, yeah, it's a good way of looking at it. Now, from an SEO strategy, I'm going to go all the way back to what I was saying. It's about um, technical, it's about content, it's about off-site, um, it's about the authority of your websites. So when you when you're thinking about how this is going to go, how this is going to scale, like keeping in mind like that really, really nice, like, you know, um, for link, um, internal link structure is a really great way to say like, you know, how are my pages going to, how is my website going to scale? How am I going to be able to increase um, my user base? That's a really, really great place to say like, okay, well, I don't have a lot of internal links going here or I've got orphan pages. I've got no internal links going to these pages. So if no one can find them, users aren't going to find them, searchers aren't going to find them, um, and all that hard work is kind of just, you know, they're doing nothing. So, yeah, this is um, Google PageSpeed Insights. Um, well, <laughs> with this one, enable text compression, preload key requests, random blocking resources, um, pretty, pretty standard stuff. Um, <laughs> you can enable text compression in your web server configurations. Um, look, this is what? This is WordPress? Yeah, baby. Baby. Look, WordPress is amazing. I really, really like WordPress because it's super customizable. You can do a lot of stuff with it. Um, and there are some really, really excellent, um, you know, page builders and things like that, like Elementor Pro. Um, they just kind of make things a lot easier. Um, you know, right out of the box. Plus it's open source, so there's heaps of people with lots of different opinions about what you can do in that. Um, from a from an image perspective, it's really easy to go through and just optimize your images, make things super fast, put them on there, and um, happy days. You can be able to compress things or be able to put them into different formats. Um, also, to you can go the advanced route and consider maybe like Cloudflare. Cloudflare has some really, really great options to look at um, you know, going in between um, the, the server and the browser and, you know, being able to serve your, your pages a lot more faster. Um, and we've, like, had some really, really great results from doing that. And that's just all from WordPress. So it's super customizable with what you can do here. So um, makes okay. sense. Yeah, great. So that's all of our time <laughs> with Zoe. But Nick, I swear you are slightly psychic because we had we actually had a WordPress question in the live chat that I think would make a great side conversation right now. So from it, but from yeah. so you said how WordPress is so customizable and that's really great. But from an SEO perspective, would you mm. prefer WordPress over something like Squarespace, Wix, or something like that? Um, look, I used to have a bit of a negative opinion about Squarespace and Wix, um, mostly because like one of my old businesses um, that <laughs> used Word, uh, sorry, Squarespace, and it was just really hard to do things within that CMS. It's a bit limited, and it's kind of like indicative of anything out of the box. Wix mm -hmm. as well. Wix has come a lot, uh, a long way. 
Um, and I actually tweeted out like a few months ago um, of a site that we've been working, a, a business that is on which, and we've been able to do some things with all the changes that they've done. Um, but I feel like, you know, that WordPress is, is, is kind of like, it's the PC of um, the web, the web builder world, if, if you will. <laughs> um, whereas maybe like those are kind of like the Mac version. Like it's a really easy user experience. Shopify is a really easy user experience. Um, it's nice and pretty and things like that. But again, it's super limited and they kind of like put you into these very set um, molds as to what you can do. Um, and I feel like with some things like it's, it's just a lot easier just to be able to go outside of the box and do things in WordPress that make it easier. I mean, for example, um, I mentioned um, for a red hot seconds, Elementor Pro. Now, mm -hmm. um, with Elementor Pro, there you can be able to make you know, category pages really, really easily um, that interlink with each other um, in a way that I don't think <laughs> I don't think like a lot of other places, uh, other things like um, can do as as easily. So, super customizable. And do, and does any of that customization or adding in like elements or pro, does any of that affect page speed? And like, what is the impact on, can you talk really quick about like page speed and its effect on SEO? Cause we had that question in the mm. chat too. Yeah. I mean, page speed isn't a new thing. I know they're called web vitals, you know, yeah. we're in the midst of a algorithm rollouts. Um, and a lot of people are worried about it. I think that there's no, Issues we've been worried about it um, because it's just basically there for a, a better user experience. Um, so you know, if the, if you've got like you know some bad um, you know, layout shifts and things like that, if your site um, takes fifteen seconds to load, like it just or just a really really long time, like clearly that's going to affect you, right? Because after a while, it will just basically time out and be like, I'm not going to continually to render these pages and. Like well, maybe it's I'll, out, I'll like your customer is gonna time out because no one's gonna sit yeah. there and wait for thirty seconds for a website to load. Who got time for that? Yeah, yeah, precisely. So if it's if it takes a really really long time, that's where I really start to look at um, at um, chipping away at it. But again, there's some really easy common denominator things that um, are <laughs> in most of the sites that I see. Images are some of the heaviest loading things. It's so easy with what you can do to be able to go through, optimize those, like, you know, compress the code, um, you know, put them into a different format, um, lazy load them, like mm -hmm. all kinds of other um, really, really great things you can do to be able to speed that up, um, which is why I kind of like broadly just glazed over it. So you can do that with your images and like with your code, you can have like you know, CSS sprites and all kinds of other wonderful mm -hmm. things, minification that will get in there and just kind of um, clean up the code a little bit. Yeah. Then we've got things like Cloudflare, which <laughs> in with WordPress. Is <laughs> <laughs> that should be that should be their logo is just like your hands. Like <laughs> <That's great. laughs> um, okay, so we have we're gonna I think this is a really great question to end on. Um, because it was asked in in the live chat, but what two part question, because I'm gonna I'm gonna make it a two part question. Sure. Does SEO have a future? And if yes, what do you see it as? I think SEO is always going to be around because people don't get search intent right. Like <laughs> matching things that um, you know we we can be able to we can be able to do. Making those kinds of assessments are really really important. And I think that SEO is always going to be around. It's just going to evolve into a different way. I mean, what SEO looked like five, ten years ago, fifteen years ago, twenty years ago. A really good friend of mine, Peter Mead. Shout out, mate. Yep, he's in the chat <laughs> you know, today. <laughs> yeah, has been um, has been a real dominant force in our industry. You know, since before Google really started to take its um, take its roots and become the um, the monolith that it is today. Um, and a really, really great um, quote that I got from Cindy Crumb, so shout out Cindy Crumb from Mobile Moxie, <laughs> was um, the best way to understand what is next is to understand what happened in the past. Um, with all these changes, things like site speed, like how much um, should we kind of consider this to be, um, you know, like, a factor that's why i'm not as stressed as maybe some other people with this stuff because unless it loads like an, like exceptionally long um the impacts i i feel like are just going to be like you know that there is like a strong suggestion rather than like a 
go forth and just make it like you know under one second <laughs> low, low, low time which would be awesome and if you're really really in that type of competitive space then that's probably a really good thing for you to do but otherwise for everybody else like chill or to quote every seo in the industry it depends <laughs> yeah i really tried not to say that today you actually. have you have gone a full hour without saying it i was about to call you out on it and then i was like well we're just gonna bring it out right now <laughs> <laughs> yeah well, very, very cool. This has been um, an incredible session to say the least, all made possible by everyone here in attendance. The chat was on fire. You guys had such incredible websites uh, to, to look over. Um, thank you to everyone who attended and especially to our guests here in the webinar room. Thank you for being so open about your SEO struggles. We, you know, we've all been there. So it's just <laughs> wonderful to hear, you know, your experiences and, and learn from each other. So, and of course, you know, that that wouldn't be possible without the amazing Nick. So thank you so much, Nick, for spending this time with us. Where can people find you? You mentioned your DMs are open. So where can we DM you at? Absolutely. Well, for everybody um, here, I've done full technical audits, which I'll be sending to your email addresses after this. Um, also, if you want to get in touch with me, um, studiohawk.com.au um, forward slash stuff forward slash Nick Ranger. <laughs> <laughs> or if you just Google Nick Ranger, she calls the action button. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Twitter. Um, it, the, my Twitter handle is actually that there. Yeah, there we go. Um, at Nick Ranger SEO or I'm on LinkedIn. So, um, yeah, I'll, I'll be checking those in the next few days, but I'm always, I'm always just like happy to, to help out. Like, um, I'm on the chair of SEO collective and that really is just there as a volunteer based thing to be able to help business owners, um, be able to ask questions without the fear of having a paywall to good advice. So it's really something I'm super passionate about. So I'm always happy to help out and, um, just see, see what I can do which is a lot because this was so jam packed full of amazing tactical insights. Like it was, it was just incredible. Um, I also want to invite you guys to follow Sunrush on social media. If you haven't already, we are Sunrush on all of our, uh, on all social media platforms. So it's super easy to find us. Um, our DMS are open too. <laughs> in case, in case you would have a group chat, we can help. <laughs> it can be us and Nick and you guys. <laughs> um, but that's where we also announce when we do like subscribe. Coming. Hit that notification <laughs> bell. <laughs> yes, yeah. yeah, so also on YouTube. And um, but that's social media is where we announce these really cool webinars and how you can apply to have your site be part of this too. So we do lots of really interactive stuff because we also love to help just like Nick does. So we hope everyone is staying safe and healthy, and we'll see you again really soon. Have a great rest of your see day. You guys. Thank Woo. you.